Hi there, my name is Rita, and I am a 35-year-old woman. For a couple of years, I was paralyzed because of a car accident. It was a tough time for me, but I was grateful to be alive. The accident opened my eyes to the true colors of my husband at the time, Sam. I met Sam at the movies. It might sound a little crazy, but we both happened to go to see the same movie alone and ended up sitting next to each other. We started talking and joking about the movie. When we left the theater, I got a good look at his face and was struck by how handsome he was. We didn't want to stop talking, so we went to a nearby cafe for coffee. That one spontaneous date led to many more. Sam was a great guy. He was funny and knew how to make every moment enjoyable. He came from a wealthy family, so he often spoiled me. I had a lot of fun with him. After dating for four years, he proposed to me, and I was excited to live a good life with him. The next couple of years were great, or so I thought. Looking back, I see there were issues that I ignored because I loved him, but I still had a good time with him. Of course, like any couple, we had our fights. One day, during an argument, we got into a car crash. I don't remember what we were arguing about, but I do remember that we were yelling at each other. In a moment of anger, while driving, Sam pulled out his phone to send a text. He took his eyes off the road and lost control of the car. The next thing I knew, we were driving into a divider, and then I blacked out. When I woke up, I saw Sam sitting by my side, looking beat up. It turns out I had been in a coma for about two weeks. My parents had also been taking turns sitting by my side, although there was some tension between them and Sam. I guess he had told them the truth about what happened. The first thing I noticed was that I couldn't feel my legs. I panicked and the doctors rushed to do some tests. They told me I was going to be paralyzed. I was devastated and inconsolable for a while. I felt like my world was ending. I stayed in the hospital for a few more weeks before I was sent home. I was still taking medicine for my other injuries, and the meds made me feel sleepy. I needed a lot of care and Sam was barely there for me. I tried not to let it bother me, but it did. I spent a lot of time in the bedroom, and one day I wanted to sit in a living room to watch TV. When Sam got home from work, I asked him if he could carry me to the couch. Hi, my love, how was work? I asked. It was so tiring. I just want to take a hot shower and relax, he replied. You go do that, but before you do, could you carry me to the couch so I can watch some TV? I asked. Are you serious? Does me being tired mean nothing to you? He snapped. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, I said. You didn't mean to? You always make things worse for me, he shouted. I'm sorry, I just feel like I'm going insane because I'm always stuck in here. If it was such a big deal, you could have just said no, I said. Whatever. I can't do this anymore, he said. What are you talking about? I asked. I can't deal with you. You're so tiring. I hate it. I deserve better than this. I'm done. I'm leaving, he said. You can't leave me. How am I supposed to do anything in this state? I cried. I don't know, and I don't care. Do what you like. Bye, he said. I was beyond heartbroken. I know caring for someone who is paralyzed is not easy. It's a full-time job. But we vowed to stay together through sickness and health, and I was paralyzed because of his reckless driving. I know he hadn't been great whenever I was sick. He would leave me to deal with my sickness alone. I remember one time when I got pneumonia and needed to be hospitalized. He conveniently had a business trip right when I started showing symptoms. When I called him because my symptoms got worse, he said he wouldn't come back. I don't even know how I got to the hospital on my own, but as soon as I got into the ER, I collapsed. I was hospitalized for three weeks, and not once did he call to check up on me. When I finally got better and was allowed to go home, Sam came back. We had a huge fight and he didn't even apologize. Looking back, I should have left him right then and there, but I thought it was something I could get over. I didn't want to let go of him. I guess it's true that love can blind people. I managed to fall asleep that night. The next morning, I needed help getting out of bed, but I couldn't do it myself. I can't even begin to describe how helpless I felt. I remember breaking down again before I was stable enough to call my mom and ask her to come over. My mom must have heard the pain in my voice because she came over immediately. I always kept a spare key under one of the flower pots at our front door, so my mom used it to get inside. She found me in bed looking like a complete mess. She quickly helped me out of bed and freshened me up. 
It felt comforting to have my mother take care of me like she used to when I was a child. Once I was back in bed, my mom asked me where San was. I'm not trying to say that I don't want to help you, darling, but where is Sam? she asked. He um, he left, I replied. Left? What do you mean? she asked. Last night we had an argument because he just got back from work and was too tired to take care of me. All I asked him to do was move me to the living room so we could watch TV together. That's hardly a difficult task, she said. No offense, darling, but you barely weigh much. I've seen him carry your drunk brother from the driveway to his room upstairs when they went drinking together after work, and your brother is massive. I know, but he thought that was asking too much. He told me he couldn't keep doing this for the rest of his life, so he just left. That son of a gun, she exclaimed. How could he do that to someone he claimed to love? If your dad got paralyzed, I would be there with him no matter how tired I was. That's what love is. Yeah, I wish I knew that. He's done this before too, you know. Whenever I've been sick, he's left me to deal with it alone. I guess I just hoped my being paralyzed would be different, I said. Oh, sweetie, why didn't you tell us about this? She asked. I don't know. It was embarrassing. I mean, what kind of partner does that? Besides, I loved him too much to leave or talk bad about him, I explained. Okay, well, I don't love him too much, she said. I'm going to call this dad. Bill will definitely be able to get a hold of him. Let's see what happens. Of course, she didn't do that right away. I was still her first priority. She made me food and helped me bathe. She helped me get into the living room where we spent time watching reality TV and just enjoyed being together. My medication made me feel sleepy, so sometime in the late afternoon, I fell asleep on the couch. When I woke up later that night, my mom had dinner ready for me. While we ate, she told me she had called Bill and told him about what Sam had done. Bill promised her he would take care of it, but he asked if it would be possible to invite Sam over so he could talk to him in front of us. I didn't know what Bill had in mind, but I knew that Bill loved me and considered me to be like his own daughter, so I was sure he would give Sam a piece of his mind. I wanted to be there when it happened, so I told my mom that Bill was welcome to handle things however he wanted. About a week later, I saw Bill. By this time, my mom and dad had moved in with me. My dad was angry and ready to confront Sam, but my mom and I convinced him to let Bill handle it instead. When Bill came over, he apologized for Sam's behavior. He said, Rita, I'm so sorry for everything Sam has done. I talked to him the other day and found out that this has been a recurring issue in your relationship. I'm really sorry about it. My dad replied, we appreciate you coming here and apologizing, but my wife and daughter have told me you're going to do something about it. If you don't, I will find Sam and deal with him myself. Bill reassured us, saying, I have plans, but you're also free to do what you feel is necessary. First, I'm disowning him. This is not the son I raised. Second, I will personally cover all of Rita's medical treatments. I'll make sure she can walk again if it's the last thing I do. I was deeply touched. Bill, that means so much to me. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm so grateful to you. Bill responded, you deserve better than Sam. I was going to send him money to help you get better, but I'm glad I didn't because he would have probably spent it on himself. My dad added, thanks a lot, Bill. We owe you. Bill shook his head. No, no. If anything, I owe Rita for putting up with Sam. There's one more thing I'd like to do. If it's okay with you, I want Sam to come over this weekend because I want him to see what happens. We agreed, and Bill added, Rita, you have your first appointment with a new specialist tomorrow. I'll send someone to pick you up and drop you off. Don't worry about a thing. I'll take care of you. After Bill left, my parents and I were speechless. How could a man as kind as Bill have raised someone like Sam? My life was about to change again, but this time it was for the better. I was, and still am, so grateful to Bill for everything he did for me. The next day my mom went with me to the doctor. After some tests, the doctor told me that my injury was treatable. He referred me to the best physiotherapist and told me to start therapy as soon as possible. I was so happy to hear this that both my mom and I burst into tears of joy. I was going to be able to walk again and feel my legs. When we got home and told my dad, it was the first time I saw him cry. We were all so happy. The rest of the week, I went to physiotherapy. The therapist said it would take a couple of years to relearn how to walk, but I was okay with it as long as I could walk again. It was tiring and tough, 
but I knew I had to keep going to get better. Finally, the weekend arrived, and I waited nervously for Sam and Bill to show up. Bill had told us he threatened to fire Sam if he didn't come over and apologize, but Sam didn't know Bill would be there too. When Sam arrived, I have to admit, I wanted to yell at him. I wanted to hurt him as much as he hurt me, but I let Bill handle it. My parents just glared at Sam as he walked over to me, trying to start a regular conversation. Hey Rita, he said. Hey Rita, is that all you have to say? You left me for almost a month, and this is all you have to say? What are you even doing here? Sam tried to brush it off. Don't make this hard, Rita. You made it hard when you were texting and driving, and then you left me all alone, knowing I couldn't take care of myself. Sam sighed, see, this is why I can't take care of you. You're always nagging and making me feel bad. I make you feel bad, since when? You've never once taken care of me. Again, see, you always do this. Do you think I don't feel bad? No, I don't think you do. If this is your way of apologizing, it's sad. Whatever, I tried to apologize, but you're being difficult. I did my best. I'll just leave now. I couldn't believe this was the man I married. Had he always been this heartless? I felt a lump in my throat and my eyes started to tear up. My heart hurt. Bill had to threaten him to even come back, and yet he didn't even try to apologize. He just blamed me again. Did he really not care about me at all? I looked at my parents and they looked just as shocked as I was as Sam turned to leave. I saw my dad snap out of his shock and rush toward Sam. Before Sam could react, my dad turned him around and punched him square in the nose. Sam yelled in pain, hunching over, and started screaming at my dad. But my dad just stared at him blankly. My mom rushed over to check my dad's hand to see if he was hurt, which, thinking back, was kind of funny. She was more concerned about my dad's hand than Sam's pain. While we were all caught up in what happened, we didn't notice that Bill had walked in. He took one look at Sam's bleeding nose and my dad's bruised knuckles and seemed to figure out what had happened. My parents eventually noticed Bill, and when Sam saw them looking in Bill's direction, he looked up too. Seeing his dad there made his face turn pale. Dad, what are you doing here? Sam asked. I thought I'd drop by to see how the apology was going, Bill said, and well, I guess it didn't go so well. I tried, but this man hit me, Sam exclaimed. Bill turned to me, Rita, is that true? Did he apologize? No, not really, I replied. He just blamed me for everything, and when I called him out, he said he left because I was too difficult. Bill sighed, wow, I'd love to say I'm surprised, but I'm not. Sam, you've disappointed me yet again. Sam tried to defend himself. Oh, come on, Dad. Even you have to admit she's being difficult. Try taking care of someone who's always nagging. Bill's voice was stern. You were the reason someone needed to be taken care of in the first place. You're selfish and ignorant, and I want nothing to do with you. Clear out your desk tomorrow and get out of all of our lives. You can't do that, Sam protested. I'm literally your legal hair. Bill then threw some papers in Sam's face. Confused, Sam caught them and quickly scanned over the documents. His face turned even paler. You can't disown me, Sam said in shock. Yes, I can, Bill responded. I'm so disappointed in you that just the sight of your face makes me angry. Your mother would have been ashamed of you. Sam's voice broke. How can you do this to me? I'm the one who's heartless. Bill didn't hold back. You were the one who abandoned your paralyzed wife after causing the accident that led to her paralysis. I said I was sorry, Sam cried out. No, you didn't, Bill retorted, and you're not going to get anything from me or Rita. Sam sneered. What could I possibly get from Rita? Bill answered calmly, every one of my assets will go to her when I die. What? Sam said, stunned. She's been so strong and has dealt with you for so long. It's the least she deserves, Bill explained. Sam turned to me in anger, this is all your fault, Rita. You just had to open your mouth. Now look at what you've done. Are you happy? I am, I said firmly. I am very, very happy. You deserve nothing less than this. Now get out of my house. Sam tried to argue, but none of us listened. Eventually, he stormed out, yelling curses at us as he left. Once he was gone, I finally breathed a sigh of relief. My nerves started to settle down, and I turned to Bill. Are you serious about transferring all your assets to me? I asked, knowing that Bill's assets were worth millions. He nodded, I am. 
I was shocked but also incredibly grateful. I tried to tell him he was going too far, but he assured me I deserved it. He also told me there was an opening in his company and that the job would be mine if I wanted it. He said I could work from home until I was able to walk again. Needless to say, I was a mess of tears, overwhelmed with gratitude. Over the next three years, I officially divorced Sam and stuck to my therapy. In two years, I was able to walk again, though my legs still felt weak if I stood too long. But after another year, I was more than healed. I took up Bill's offer and worked at his company. I found myself enjoying life for the first time in a long while. I was doing well in every aspect of my life, and nothing could bring me down. As for Sam, I happened to run into him at a grocery store. He looked haggard, very skinny and like he hadn't slept in a long time. He recognized me and I tried to walk away, but he approached me. You can walk, he asked, shocked. Yeah, it took a while, but it turned out that my condition was curable, I replied. So you lied to me? You stole everything from me and made me look like a villain for nothing, Sam accused. Sam, you did that to yourself, I said calmly. If, after all these years, you still don't understand what you did wrong, you're beyond help. Sam's voice softened. These years have been nothing but a struggle. Look at me. I'm constantly tired and all alone. I would care, but I can't bring myself to, I said, unfazed. My dad was stupid to give you everything, Sam muttered bitterly. Oh, but I'm the one working harder than you and actually growing the business, I countered. In fact, just yesterday, your dad was telling me how smart it was to hire me in your place. It doesn't matter, Sam said, trying to regain control. I'll talk to my dad and have him see the error of his ways. Whatever, Sam. I wish you nothing but luck. Goodbye. Running into him and seeing him in that state made me feel great. He finally got what he deserved. It's sad that he still thinks he's right, but that's no longer my concern. Now I just plan on living my best life, surrounded by people who actually care for me. I'm done making excuses for people, and I've learned my worth. I hope that everyone listening will take a page from my book and realize that your worth is always more than being treated like trash. Always stick with those who are there for you at your lowest, because they'll be the ones who soar with you at your highest.